The cold spell hitting the Bay Area is more than an inconvenience for the homeless. It is a battle for survival. There are between five and 8,000 homeless people just in San Francisco alone, and hundreds of them were able to escape the cold in the city's homeless shelters last night. But many others were turned away because there is no room. I feel threatened. Yeah, I think one person can do something about anything. Any of us could end up there. Oh, I feel really bad. It's kind of scary. I have to walk by, there's not really that much something has to be done about it. Some people are doing something. They've decided that it's better to do something, no matter how simple, than to do nothing. They're using 100% recycled materials to make these very simple, no-cost sleeping bags. The bags are then distributed free to people who are cold on the street. You can make a difference, too. Here's how you can make an emergency, cost-free sleeping bag out of recycled materials. If you can tie a knot, you can make a sleeping bag. It's easy and it's fun, and it can make a big difference. Step one. Make a seven-foot square. Lots of my brother's keeper volunteers do nothing else but make these squares at home. So if your group wants already made squares, contact your local organizers. Step two. Make a second seven-foot square. Step three. Sew the two squares together along one edge. These first three steps can be done alone at home by volunteers. Step four. Lay out the bag. You're going to need some room and some friends for this. Make a construction space by pushing two or three tables together or finding a clear floor area. Step five. Stuff the sleeping bag. You're going to make a sandwich by layering soft old clothes, sweaters, t-shirts, torn blankets, or mattress pads on top of the backside of the inside. This is like filling a sandwich. Step six. Put the top on your sandwich. Pull the outside square over the stuffed inside square and straighten them out so they are both smooth. Step seven. Tie the layers of your sandwich together. You'll need some needles with big eyes and sharp points. And you'll need some strong string, crochet cotton, or sturdy yarn to tie the layers together. Take a stitch and tie a knot. Push the needle down from the top, cross over about one half inch underneath, and come back up. Tie a double knot. If the stuffing is small pieces of rummage, you need to tie about every six inches. For this one, the stuffing is one large piece, so it's okay to tie about every foot or so, just enough to keep the insides from shifting around. Oops. <laughs> Step eight. Add ties. These ties can be made from old neckties or strips of fabric. Before we close up the bag, we're going to pin the ties on the bottom edge of the sleeping bag. That's because they have to end up outside, which right now is still inside. Pin one tie seven inches from the edge and the other 14 inches from the edge. Step nine. Fold the bag in half lengthwise and sew it shut. Sew around the outside about two or three inches from the edge using your big needles. This seam allowance acts as a baffle inside the bag to keep cold air out. Backstitch or tie a knot occasionally as you go to make the seam extra sturdy. Step 10. Turn the finished bag right side out. Fold it in half lengthwise, roll it up and tie it. You can also tuck in things in the bag that make another day on the streets a little less difficult for a homeless person. It's quite familiar, actually. <laughs> These ties become shoulder straps for carrying the bag during the day. Now it's time to get those sleeping bags out on the street. Contact the organizations in your area that provide services to the homeless. Churches, shelters, a mobile assistance van. 
Lots of organizations are eager to distribute these zero-cost emergency sleeping bags to people who need them. Can a simple sleeping bag make a difference? My brother's keeper thinks so. We are individuals and groups desiring to help the homeless by making simple sleeping bags from recycled fabrics and distributing them free to people who are cold on the street. Our only purpose is to help the homeless be warm until they can be helped or healed by others in our society. Finally, on this Christmas Day, we end our special week of Making a Difference reports with a woman determined to bring warmth on this holiday and every single day. She was inspired by a homeless man who helped her and her son when they needed it most. NBC's Chris Jansing has the story. Like an old-fashioned quilting bee, groups of volunteers are turning out handmade sleeping bags for people they've never even met. To understand why, you have to travel to Hop Bottom, Pennsylvania, and to Flo Wheatley's kitchen. She can look at her now grown son, and 30 years melt away. Back to when Leonard was just 14, fighting cancer, sick, exhausted, and caught post chemo in a New York City downpour. And we got to the subway, and it was still raining, but he was extremely weak. So I propped him up on one of the suitcases, and, um, I heard somebody behind me say, lady, you need help. It was a homeless man who carried their suitcases, helped them get to a friend's house, and left them with a message. He looked straight at me and he said, don't abandon me. And after seeing another homeless man shivering in a tattered blanket, Flo had the idea of recycling used clothes, sewing them into simple, warm sleeping bags. You stop bringing them in? Yes, by all sure. means. And delivering them to the needy whenever the weather turns cold. Our motto is to keep someone alive tonight until they can help or be healed by someone in our society tomorrow. My brother's keeper has taken over the Wheatley's barn. Boxes come in filled with scrap material or with finished sleeping bags. So we're going to make a new fold and the fold will be up here. And Flo now spends much of her time helping other groups get started. There are now my brother's keeper sewing groups like this one, large and small, in all 50 states and around the world. So many, Flo Wheatley long ago lost track. But she knows they've made hundreds of thousands of sleeping bags for the homeless. For Flo, my brother's keeper is her way of saying thanks for Leonard's life and for the homeless man who would change their lives forever. I never saw that man again, but uh, a lot of people have said he was an angel. This is what we were going to do. And if Leonard had to have cancer to find it, then that was a gift. A simple gift of kindness that she's returned every day for 29 years. Chris Jansing, NBC News, Hot Bottom, Pennsylvania. And you can find much more on this week's special holiday Make a Difference, Making a Difference series on our new website, makingadifference.msnbc.com. Finally here at 6, what goes around comes around, or so the saying goes. Mike Stevens has a story from Susquehanna County that proves the worth of that statement. At her Susquehanna County home, Flo Wheatley is more than happy to roll out the story that began 30 years ago. These are pictures from our scrapbooks. 30 years ago, Flo and her husband Jim saw a problem they felt they could not ignore. All of a sudden we realized we could help, we could do something. And so began a project called My Brother's Keeper. 
So it's not solving homelessness, but it is uh, taking a bite out of the pie. It's a large bite, in fact, spreading from the porch of their home back in 1982 across the U.S. and, Flo says, into countries around the world. Neither one ever saw that coming. No, it's just a kitchen table project. You know, just the kids and I and Jim. No, we had no idea, but all of a sudden we found out pretty quickly that people wanted to help, and they did. Did they ever? In the Wheatley's garage, you can see some of the 100,000 or so sleeping bags made for homeless people nationwide each year. Scraps of cloth, this and that, go into each one. Those bags are a gift from volunteers who make them to those who need them, sometimes for unexpected reasons. And they're, and they're on the street for many, many, many different reasons. Mm -hmm. Not just veterans from right. the war, not, not just drug addicts or alcoholics, but people have lost their jobs and, and can't find another one and they've mm -hmm. lost their home mm -hmm. and so forth. A generation has gone by, 30 years, but the need hasn't lessened. Sleeping bags go out nearly every day, sometimes, the Wheatley say, to folks who never believed it could happen to them. It did. Good that there was at least one helping hand. Mike Stevens, News Watch 16 on the Pennsylvania Road in Susquehanna County.